Greetings friends, this is the blade end of the shaft of the wind turbine and you can see what's happened if I can zoom in properly. This has been kind of sheared off by the other blade hub coming loose. Now what I need to do, I need to align the blade hub with this hole here but there's a bit of a problem there, let me just show you. So this is the back of the blade hub for the smaller set of blades and when it's on that hole is too far forward. Yeah, the hole is too far forward. So basically what I need to do, I need to take this hub with the blades on and I need to put the blades uh, on the other side so that... Uh, so that it'll fit on like that. And then this bolt here will align, or one of the bolts will align perfectly with that hole. Uh, so the blades need to go get flipped 180 degrees basically like that so that's the job I've got to do now I do want to continue using these in the lower wind conditions because I do believe it helps start up and uh, helps get it up to voltage basically but I don't think it helps when the wind's over 20 miles an hour but they're going to stay on for now uh, but the blades have got to be flipped so I'm going to do that first uh, just a reminder that yesterday I got the uh, wiring replaced the terminal connectors uh, still got this job to do here and then align the motor so the chains a bit tighter but I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow because I don't really like the rain if I'm honest sweet so morning YouTube it's Sunday this had a coat of paint last night the blade hub and now I need to give the blades a bit of a clean up and get them back on there uh, facing this way so to speak uh, this is what the blades look like and the nuts and bolts need replacing, which is fine because I've got some. So I'll get those cleaned up. So they're just going to wipe down to remove any loose bits and uh, a little bit of a sand. I don't have the minerals to do any more than necessary, so I'm just going to give them a lick of paint. I'm pleased to say I've got a brand new tape measure, so I'm just going to measure a few things uh, for the new uh, viewers of the channel. So these short blades, uh, they're 55 and a half centimetres long. Uh, 22 inches and there's six of them uh, the blade hub for the smaller blades which I made myself uh, that's eight inches across uh, the these are collars that you can buy and the center of the collar is 25 mil which is the same size as a shaft uh, you'll see how I did it with this one I actually drilled uh, used a hole saw to drill a 40 mil hole and then welded two of those on because one wouldn't be enough if I just had this one uh, wouldn't be able to get a bolt in so I had to weld another one on top and then that's that so that's eight inches across the fiberglass blades are 135 centimeters long just over 53 inches so that's four feet one two three four four feet five inches add to that four and a half inches so it's about four feet nine and a half inches so just shy of 10 feet, the actual rotor diameter. The tail is 31 and a half inches, so just shy of two and a half, just over two and a half feet long. Uh, by two feet, and that's made out of sort of two mil galvanized steel. The tail boom, is uh, five and just over five and a half feet 170 mil if we go all the way from the tail from the back of the tail to the front of the shaft that is 10 feet so that's how long it is it's almost exactly as long as the diameter of the blades the turbine frame itself is 34 and a half inches so just shy of three feet and wide is nine inches so i just wanted to show you those measurements it shows it's quite hard to tell actually how big it is uh, this these two bearings they are you know basically i was just going to use one bearing 
and then I thought, no, that's going to work. So the addition of a second bearing makes this whole thing completely bulletproof. Very, very strong indeed. And also the addition of these strips here, uh, they support the right at the back end of the turbine. So they're taking all that weight from there and distributing it to these bearings. So that, this was a very good idea. Uh, I made all this to be adjustable, which is why there's things like this big bolt here, which I never, and I've never really adjusted it so in the future i could do away with all this as completely unnecessary uh, then maybe you can get a better view of where that's worn away and you can get a better view of the recess which is going to align with the bolt when we turn the blades the other way around the blade hub i'm quite uh sort of proud of you can just see the how tight that is on there uh, this was made out of an axle bearing you can see the four bolt holes there and with a plate and then one of these collars welded on each side and the plates that the blades sit on are actually 10 mil thick so that is very heavy and super solid but yeah so that's the measurements let's just try and measure exactly how high the tower is i'm going to measure from here to the base so the whole length of the tower is 19 feet which is obviously pretty short but very very solid because you can see uh, we've actually got three sets of guide ropes and you'll see some people's towers this high would only have one set or maybe two so that's the reason why it's still standing after getting some major beatings this i think was a really good idea because what this, these enable me to use a zoom camera to look in to see how the alignment is you know, it's just one of those things, they're only about three quid each, so I could recommend it, definitely on a, a taller tower. So I've just been to the shop we have in the UK called Tool Station. They're very cheap, so stuff like this. 40mm uh, M6 bolts, I've got two packs of those for the blade hub. And they are 80p, including that, a pack, so that's a dollar. So 10 cents for a 40mm M6 uh, screw bolt. These were £4.50, so that's about just over $5. That's for 100 M8 nylon knocking, nut, lock, knocking nuts. <coughs> locking nuts, And they're what I need to make sure the U-bolt malarkey doesn't come out. And these were about £1.20, so about $1.50 uh, for 100 uh, M6 hexagon nuts. So yeah, all that came to about $8. I know most of my uh, subscribers are Americans, so I do try and mention stuff in dollars where I can. Sweet! Right, so let's get these blades on. I'm probably going to speed it up because it's a bit of a faff around if I'm honest. What I've done, I've put two nuts on each, seeing as I had a massive pack of 100. So they are ready to go on and looking fairly swanky, I think. Uh, this is the working bolt, so there's a hole inside where the bolt comes through, and then we need to make sure that's in there. I couldn't do it before because it was uh, simply the wrong way round, and I don't want to drill another hole in here, so they're going to go on and as long as that bolt lines up nicely we'll be laughing so that's in perfectly absolutely no wobble at all there's no point doing this one up because it's kind of wedged in there and it doesn't really make any difference to the setup so now what I'm, the only job I've got left to do is to get these uh, get the nylon bolts on there and on the back and then hopefully we'll be good to go Another quick point about these, the reason I use these is because the tower and the base was made years ago uh, before I really knew what I was doing. And when the tower goes up, the wires have to be a little bit slack, otherwise they snap when it's coming down. So this was just an easy way of doing it rather than rebuilding the whole base of the tower and moving all the bits where the, because these are actually above the ground 
and it's not perfectly square so it's just something I have to do whenever the tower comes down these all get loosened slacked off tower comes down goes back up these are all pulled tight and then it virtually goes into exactly the right place but by using my zoom camera which I'll show you we can we can look in on these and we can get the bubbles as square as we can it's just a cheap way of doing it rather than having to rebuild the whole bottom of the tower and re-concrete everything I uh, can't be doing that so sweet just gonna show you how the chain is that feels pretty good it's all about how much effort it takes to turn because if this is out of alignment you're going to be losing a lot in efficiency Hopefully that will last. We're not due any severe wind for a while. One thing I am going to do is soak the chain in oil again. So that feels good to go. You can hear there's not a lot of clicking. Totally soaked in oil. I do want to set something up uh, like a, a drip feeder type thing, which could be gravity fed, uh, that would just drop a tiny little bit of oil in there at a time. So that's something for the future. That's pretty much ready to go back up. There's a few things uh, I need to sort out another time which I need help with because my shoulders are only running about 10% of capacity. So that's ready to go back up and I'm pretty sure uh, there should be enough wind to get some movement because once it's moving, that's it. It doesn't take much for it to be actually making power. Uh, I'll keep it set up at 24 volts, but there's always the option just to change the battery and hit the button on the control, change the dip switches on the controller. So yeah, that should be good to go. So this is what it looks like before I tighten the those there. Right, I'll give it a pull just to show you. So there's, you can see it's not the ideal angle, but I can't really do a lot about it. But that is good news because I believe it's connected up to direct to the dump load. So if it's actually turning, uh, clearly see the one kilowatt bike hub is turning you little beauty and yeah i'm feeling good about this so all i've got to do now is get these tightened up and the slack taken in and then it's ready to rock and roll sweet so that's all good to go another small advantage of what i've done with the blades is that the smaller set are now further forward you can see the space there on the shaft uh, I can put the large set of blades more forward, which in theory will catch more wind, but the further away the blades are from the front, the more wobble any tiny little inconsistencies will cause and you get found out quite easily. So that's looking really good, my friends. That's the video for now, and I'll see you in a live stream very soon, hopefully. Cheers. Maybe today. It's supposed to be getting up to 18 miles per hour about 3 o'clock this afternoon, so I'll see you then. Cheers.